What's going on people, it's your man the YB, back once again, so we got some breaking news right now, regarding Fraser Clark, aka, where's he from, is he Essex, I don't know where he's from, wherever he's from, he the booty, he the booty popper, Fraser the booty popper Clark, and Fabio Wardley, here we go, the BBBOC have now officially ordered Wardley to defend his British heavyweight title in a rematch against Fraser Clark next purse bids August 14th okay so purse bids is when it's all timed out so between now for the next month they've got a month to negotiate for someone to agree to something and then if that flops it goes to purse bids and the highest bidder wins the, the fight this is the right fight to make bottom line now the potential controversy that exists is that I mean, both Dons, yeah, I've seen a few things here and there. Fabio Wardley, yeah, was very active. Until this last fight, he was very active. Calling this guy out, calling that guy out. I ain't heard him say nothing. And after the fight, immediately he said, yeah, we'll kind of do what makes sense. He wasn't saying, Fraser Clark, I'm getting your big booty popping ass next. I want it I want it back to back. And even Fraser Clark, I, Fraser Clark don't have the belt. But even Fraser Clark was saying, well, we'll see if there's if a big fight presents itself outside of this rematch, then we'll look at So neither man really. Bear in mind Fabio Wally was the kind of social media Donny, all in the video. I ain't heard much from him. Putting it on Clark saying I want you next. And I haven't heard much from Fraser Clark. My point? Well we know historically, Fraser Clark has pulled out of a purse bid before. So it's not unprecedented for one of these individuals to decide their career needs to go in a different direction. Especially with a Saudi bag milling about. Um, really, I'm... Uh, given that this fight's been ordered anyway, this really should be put on the British Wembley card, September 21st. Obviously, is it a bit late now? I don't know, September 21st, let's count how many weeks it is from now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's 10 weeks away from today. So I'm confused really, why? I guess, who's Fabio Wardley with? Fabio Wardley, he's more Dillian White slash Matchroom, is he? I'm not even, I don't even know where Fabio Wardley, who, I don't know who he fights for, I'm trying to think now. That fight was on Sky. Wardley versus Clark was on Sky. But then Wardley fought Adelaide in Saudi. So there's some sort of Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn connection there. So I don't know why Turkey... This would have been perfect on the Wembley card. Perfect. If anything, I've looked at that card and at first glance I wasn't... Even now I'm not that impressed. As I remember talking about it, Buatzi and Willie was the second most intriguing fight on that card. So, certainly, Wardley versus Clark would have been above Buatzi and Willie. Turkey, put this fight in there, man. Yeah, tell these tell these cats, hey, man, however much bread you was going to get for doing your own moody show, I'll double it up, come get ready in ten weeks, which is a long time anyway. Well, it's not a short time, is it? It's not a short time to make more money with Turkey. And make that September 21st card have a bit more zing to it. Yeah? I ain't going to lie... For me, the September 21st card's a bit more generic slash old boxing style. We've got used to Turkey's events where it's like banger after banger. This card's a bit... Mm, I think, let's look at the card. Um, September 21st, 2024. Turkey card. I'm just guessing at the words right now. I'm going to lie. Here we go. Here's the Turkey card. Here is the Prince Turkey Sheikh Mohammed Salman Bin card. Come on, people, look at this. It's weak. It's very weak. So you've got Dubois and AJ. Listen, I like Hamza Shiraz. Listen, if Hamza Shiraz versus Eubank was number two, I'd say, bum, that's official. But this, though, Shiraz versus Denny, if that's your number two, that's traditional boxing. Traditional boxing is AJ versus someone, and then he has like a eh, kind of fight. This is a eh, kind of fight, if we're honest with ourselves. Kakachi versus Warrington. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's one of them again. Leon Smith versus Kelly. Hey, solid, right? Solid, but... Mm. Barazzi versus Hutchinson. It's solid, solid fights-ish. 
It's lacking though the Fraser Clark versus Wardley. Yeah, it should be AJ Dubois, Wardley versus Clark, then the rest of these cats, and then cut this bottom off off here. Chamberlain versus Josh, get him off there. I don't, listen, I'm a casual. I don't know these guys. Fair play to them, they're getting their bread, yeah? I'd never hate on these lower level guys getting their bread, but come on now. Let's go to spare spade. Who want to see Wardley versus Clark and cut these cats off at the bottom? Yeah, this is th these cats here is like a one of them cards. A traditional card. This is supposed to be the big IFBB Pro, the Battle of the Bodybuilders, the, ba the Battle of the British Bodybuilders card, Turkey. Listen, Turkey, if you're trying... Listen, his Turkulency. If you're trying to put on the Battle of the British Bodybuilders event, we can't be having Chamberlain versus Padley instead of Ward versus Clark. That's what you can't be doing. So cut this bit off the bottom, bang Wardley and Clark in there, bosh, we've got a proper card that's a solid card at that point this is lacking right now i'm just gonna be honest with you this is the weakest one it's put on yet and that's the only problem you see we're pumping out a lot of a lot of cards you spread yourself a little bit too thinly and this card is a little bit too thin for my liking anywho the bottom line is i hope now historically if you're gonna bet on anyone flapping it in the purse bid and declining the purse bid you'd have to go with fraser clark it's Fraser Clark, all due respect, you in that fight. He was spitting his gum shield out a whole bunch. Now, the corny commentators tell you, oh, that's a veteran move. No, no. That's a move. If someone spit their gum shield out, yeah, that's a man who don't want to fight no more. He had enough. Slash wants a break. It's not as bad as quitting, but ultimately, to spit your gum shield out three or four times, that's a signal I'm too tired and I have to do something now outside of actually fighting. Like I'm supposed to be doing. So there's a little bit of the bitch in dude. If I'm honest. I can't stand huggers. There's obviously a hierarchy. Quitters. What's worse? What's worse? Clinching or spitting your gum shield out? It's debatable. Yeah? When you have prolific huggers. Like Richard Re Hugpour and Lawrence Hug Coley. I've never been more infuriated than watching Hug Coley versus Billum Smith. I've never been more frustrated than watching Rehug Poor versus Billem Hug. Billem Hug. Yeah? So that was irritating. But the gum spitting out ain't much better. And I think Clark does a lot of clinching as well. So I've digressed. Giving you that psychology there. Will Fraser Clark flap it again and blame. Ben Shalong's got a built in narrative. Oh, sorry. That whole camp, they can just say, oh, it's Ben Shalong's fault. Oh, my promoter's fault. But in reality, neither of these men can pass go at this point let's be real to break into that world stage at the least you gotta be each other well, someone's got to come out dominant or at least victorious in the clark versus wardley i didn't see enough from either man to say that you pass go yeah clark was clearly boxing well i was surprised i ain't gonna lie i was surprised but clark was literally boxing wardley's ears off he scored a knockdown and then Wardley was gassed as well. And Clark was gassed. So, like, I mean, we all critique people's... We all critique these heavyweights' gas tanks, yeah. But that was a... Whoa. These cats are, like, still eight round fighters, essentially. They haven't broken onto that. And we rate Wardley's power. But, again, he couldn't get the job done. Yeah? And we all critique AJ. But you put AJ in there with someone like... I mean, at this point, what can you say about Fraser Clark? You can't say Fraser Clark's any better than a Povetkin. And AJ was just dealt with Povetkin, right? AJ dealt with Lad. So, Cl Wardley's not like a pure puncher like that. And he's actually quite slow when it comes to real boxing. And that was evident. Clark was just popping him with that jab. Popping him right in his mouth. I was shocked. I really thought Wardley would, would be able to hang in the boxing department, but he couldn't hang. Um, he's gritty, though. That's what he has got. Anyway, this fight needs to happen. Let me tell these two cats right now. Don't bother doing nothing else. Ain't no one interested in you man fighting no one else. Yeah? That's what you best believe. Wardley versus Clark 2 is where it's at. Yeah? All you man should be focused on right now. If I was Ben Shalong or whoever's managing Wardley, I'd have the blower right now and talking to Turkey man. Hey man, Turkey. Or even start to... F Listen. Again. I'd never wish on Mark Chamberlain. Just because I haven't heard of Mark Chamberlain and Josh Padley yet. Let that man eat. Just start the card earlier, right? So if the card was scheduled to start at 6, start it at 5. 
Start the card at five, bring on Chamberlain and Padley, and then Barsh, bang in Clark and Wardley somewhere in there. Well, it's got to be, come on, Clark and Wardley, people stop. Clark and Wardley's got to be above Denny and Shiraz. Shiraz, yeah, he got some hype, but come on, he ain't done nothing so far, if I'm honest. He, well, not, he just hasn't, not about being honest. Yeah, I could lie about it, and he still ain't done nothing. <laughs> yeah, you see that one there? He ain't, so he can't be number two. That, that, that... I'm surprised Turkey put this on. I'm surprised Turkey signed off on this. This isn't a... It doesn't even have a... Normally in, in fights here, you have the main event and then a co-main. There's no co-main on here. Any one of these fights, Baratsi Hutchinson could be considered, in my mind, equal to Denny. I actually argue it's probably higher than that one, if we're honest. That's why I said it in, earlier. Baratsi Hutchinson is actually my the f second fight I'm looking forward to. It's not Hamza Denny. Hamza Denny's... Let's have a look at the odds. Hamza. I reckon the odds... I reckon this is going to be like 6-1 to one for Hamza. Which is the point I'm making. Usually Turkey, yeah, he puts shows on... Yeah, boom. Massive. So Tyler Denny's a 5-1 to one underdog. Come on, is that your co-main? We're used to. Hergovic Dubois. Zhang versus Wilder. Um, who else is on there? Zhang versus Wild, Hergovic Dubois. That card was banging. The whole way through banging. Quite a few of the cards banging. Come on. Hamza versus Denny, man. That's not a number two, Turkey, man. Put me on. I'll... All these RYB, Matchroom, RYB, Queensberry. We've got matchmakers. If you've got matchmakers, is this the best you can come up with, people? This looks like... I don't even know who... I don't know... I don't know who made this card. I'm going to be... Call us better spade here. This card is weak. It's just weak. I like Kachi. I like Kachi. But Warrington, man, he washed up. He washed up. I like Josh Kelly, but Liam Smith, he washed up. In fact, let's check the odds on all these situations right now. These these situations for me all feel like. In fact, let's check Boratzi in, because I'm going to put some bread on this one for the culture. The YB is going to back Boratzi. Boratzi. Uh, and I, I'm hoping there's enough um, better knuckle cats. That have pumped up the odds for Hutchinson. Yeah? I'm hoping it's going to be like a 50 50 type fight because I'm fixing to make some money on this one. You best believe it for the culture, for the culture's sake. Oh, that's a bit. So you put a tenner on Boazzi, you get £4.40 back. Come on now. I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing that. You put a tenner on, you get £4.40 back. And that's weak. You put a tenner on Hutchinson, you get twenty-two quid back. I'm not, I'm not touching this fight, but yeah, it's not as. Um, I mean, yeah, you got to lean towards Barazzi winning, but I was hoping the bare knuckles would come in and pump Willie up. You know what I'm saying? So we got Tyler. Tyler Denny's a five to one underdog. Liam Smith, Liam Smith versus Kelly. Yeah, that's another one. I'm fixing to put some coin on Kelly. Kelly too fresh. Liam Smith. Kelly versus Smith odds oh, checker. I'm hoping this one's 50 52 because you best believe it. We fix it to go in. Oh, shh. This is mad, people. Oh, oh people stop. The YB going in on this one. You put a 10 on Josh Kelly, you get 15 quid back. £25 total return. You put a 10 on Liam Smith, you get £8 back. So Liam Smith's a kind of like a 60 40 favourite. Oh, it's more like a. 55 45 favorite but whatever he's a 60 40 55 45 favorite Liam Smith is no way Josh Kelly yes Liam Smith has the primo he's like more of a career but Josh Kelly he's sharp and if Josh Kelly Kelly comes in on his job I'm not sure what weight what, what weight it's at but it's going to be at 154 or 160 and Josh Kelly's a big dude he was drained at 147 he looking sharp though Josh Kelly box wreck I want to see he, he punched up some cat I've got his name now I bet I made some coin on that fight as well this fight where is it um Troy Williamson in this fight yeah it was like Josh Kelly's make or break and the odds were 50 50 and Josh Kelly went in there and just boxed the ears clean off him proper box it 100 yeah now he hasn't really fought he hasn't fought that next level of opposition. That's the only problem. And Liam Smith is no, undoubtedly. Liam Smith's like another Avenesian. Not in terms of necessarily style, but in terms of quality. So if Josh Kelly's going to come unstuck, it's going to be against Liam Smith. But Liam Smith a bit long in the tooth. He's what? 
I mean, Eubank, he's 35, had a hard career, he's long in the tooth. Josh Kelly, he pretty, right? He going to be, he quick as well, he's qu honestly. Josh Kelly reminds me of Ryan Garcia in terms of the speed, super quick. But when you put it on him, man, like Tank, when Tank put it on, when Tank put the heater on, the TikTok queen, TikTok king, the king of TikTok, he fold. Yeah, when Avenesium put it on, the pretty boy, he fold. So, it's not their fault though. Yeah, when you're pretty looking, that's... God don't give you everything, right? You can't be pretty looking and hard. You don't go two and two. The hardest bars is usually ugly. Like the gap tooth rabbit. <laughs> no, I'm not saying. Usually it's not actually bad looking, but you get the point I'm making. <laughs> if you're the gap tooth golem looking ass, if you're the golem looking ass, you probably bad man inside. Yeah? God made you that way for a reason. It's like a warning signal. Don't come near that dude. He he ugly and he bad. Yeah? If you're pretty looking, you're sweet. And you goofy a bit. So, yeah, anyway. I'm, I'm putting some coin on uh, Josh Kelly. You best believe it. And the rest of the card... Obviously, I'm gonna back Kakachi. Kakachi smoke Warrington. He too, he too loses the goose. Kakachi versus Warrington. Odds checker. I've completely gone off the topic here. This video was supposed to have nothing to do with this card, but more time. It's one of them for this card. You best believe it. Yeah, Kakachi. You put a ten on Kakachi, you get four quid back. It's not a bad bet. The Kakachi's too strong. Kakachi too big and strong. And Warrington's too old and. Warrington, for a fact, can't punch a lick. And that Welsh Donny that Kakachi was in there, he can punch. He's known as the Team Eggs, right? Team Conor Hen. Yeah? I forgot his name now, but the, the Welsh Donny, he's a puncher himself. A, a boxer puncher, but he's not no he's not no Josh Warrington. Josh Warrington can't bang that. He's aggressive, but he's like slapping. Imagine Tyson Fury, if you wound him up. And put a load of volume on him. That's what it looked like. Just slapping around. There's no not a, jo people. Josh Warrington don't stop no one. And Kakachi, yeah, he too tight in the pocket. Bop, and it, Warrington will get peased up. So if you want to make some easy coin, you put a, you put a bill on, and you get a free Chinese back, forty bucks. People, that might be a play. In fact, I might double it up. I might go Barsh, Kakachi, and um, Kakachi and what's his name? Kakachi, Buatzi, and then Kelly. Do a mad compounder and then lose, <laughs> undoubtedly lose one of them fights. Probably lose all three of them. <laughs> but anyway, let me know your thoughts, people. Fraser Clark, Fabio Wallen, don't, don't play no games. Don't let me have to come on here yet and talk about how one of you cornballs ain't with it. Because you man ain't got nowhere else to go like that. You just haven't. You might be able to nick a show here and there, but come on. This is it now. This is the big time. Yeah, this is like Martin Bowers in Daniel Dubois' corner against Joe Joyce. This is it, Dan. We're here now. This is the fight game. Wardley, I like Wardley. He's proven more than Clark. Yeah, but Wardley was Wardley looked devastating against bums, essentially. Let's call it a spare spade. Then he ended up in a real fight and he weren't so deadly no more. He was not so deadly. So he found out, oh, it's not just white collar sweet. Yeah, oh, boxing isn't all about these white, these sweet white collar looking asses. Fraser Clark, the same, not the same, but Fraser Clark can box, but he can't. He has about six rounds of gas. That's his hurdle. His hurdle is, oh, it's actually a 12-round fight and not six rounds. If it was six rounds, Wardley would have done nothing. Because his, his jabs is too too proper. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe, like off the bell, 100%. No doubt about it. People, stop it.